and let's watch this cesspool burn. GameStop has been poisoning the gaming retail space for decades, making the world a more miserable experience, always pushing for short-term profit over creating any kind of loyal fan base, and this is what we are going to show today. You would think that by this store merely existing at this point, Giving game enjoyers a place to be around all of the coolest new games and technology, that it would be impossible for them to get so many people worked up in hating this company. But guess what? Uh, you guys somehow managed to do it. Good job. The idea of walking into one of these stores and navigating a simple purchase makes me shudder. All right. This one's for you, GameStop marketing people. If you've stumbled into this video, I want you to stop. You guys have clearly screwed up. This is your opportunity to change things. So here are five reasons why this company is screwed to the very foundation. Reason number one, the very job itself is set up to abuse people. Do you know the warranties that they ask you if you want to add on to the purchase of a game? Well, if they didn't ask you if you want to add a warranty, check the receipt because the odds are nine out of 10 times they actually just charged your card for that warranty and never asked you or told you anything about it. So what the managers would tell the employees is actually the only way to reach that criteria is by sneaking it in. And what would happen to us employees who did not sneak it into transactions, you would be written up if you didn't meet the criteria, which you wouldn't meet it if you didn't sneak it on there. And if you were written up three times, you would actually be fired for that. All right, we're gonna hit the basics here really quick. A certain percentage of every sale needs to sell a certain number of subscriptions to the loyalty program, referred to as the Power Up Rewards program. Also, you need a certain percentage of pre-orders, warranties, and multiple item sales for every sale that you make. This is burned into your skull and emphasized as the most important thing in the world. You better be getting your pre-orders, warranties, subscriptions, and all the other crap. You better be hitting your numbers or else. A little while ago, I braved a GameStop store in the middle of the day only to hear a store manager, a real bro type in his mid-twenties, berating another guy at about the same age for not amping up his sales game. Literally right in front of me, I'm hearing out loud how the lowly employee isn't convincing shoppers properly enough to add the $3 warranty to game sales effectively. He's giving this dude tips on how to push pre-orders and all of the other slides crap that we've come to universally hate about this company. It's not like the regular employee was incompetent either. He'd been working there for years at this point, and every time I dealt with him in the past, he followed the script. It was ridiculous what I was seeing, and honestly, I was disgusted. I could tell that this guy was fighting back his emotions, as I would be in that situation, and he must have been crapped on so many times in the past. So I decided to intervene. So, <laughs> so I walk up and I say, you know, what you're doing right now, I say to the manager, is exactly why I hate coming to this store. And of course, he's like, huh, what do you mean? So I just call him on his BS. I know this game too well at this point. I ask him, what do you mean? What do I mean? This is exactly why I try to order from Amazon every chance I get these days. You're teaching your employees to act like predatory drones. And that's why Twitter and Reddit is filled with nothing but complaining about how you guys act. And you're no different. The dumbfounded deer in headlights look coming from this guy was incredible. I started laughing at him and I was telling him, I was pleading with him, just drop the act, man. I'm older than this guy and I know exactly what this is. I'm like, buddy, there is no way that you're not making this guy's life miserable. I look over to the regular employee. I like this guy. I apologize for this sort of commentary on him, but I can tell he's enjoying this. I tell the manager, do you really think 
that talking down to your employees like this is going to make them thrive in the workplace? Or do you think that maybe, just maybe, this is what they're talking about when the phrase toxic work environment gets thrown around? Do you think maybe that could be applying to you in this situation? Nobody likes working under this type of garbage. These just out of reach sales goals in order to keep your job here at GameStop, where your career literally can't go anywhere. You get paid minimum wage just to get crapped on by managers who, sorry, (laughs) spoiler alert, aren't going anywhere either, is making your workers all depressed, and guess what? The customers see that too, and we don't want to come here anymore either. So, of course, as this is all going on, in the back of my mind, I'm like, Chris, what are you doing here? You should be beyond this at this point, but I don't know. This is cathartic for my teenage self, apparently. Eventually, the manager starts trying to argue point by point with me, and I just laugh at him, continuously reminding him that he can drop the act because I know his own policy better than he does, and I just recite them right back to him. This dude literally lied through his teeth and eventually stormed off. The other guy, the employee that I like, the normal one, once the manager stormed away, started praising me and thanking me, telling me that I was right all along, how the employees are pitted against each other, leading to inner team animosity, how everyone's just barely scraping by, and whoever gets the worst sales numbers gets their hours cut. He starts telling me about how this very manager, who just lied to my face, was telling him that he needs to start just adding warranties to people's sales without even telling them, and it's up to the customer to realize that they have the warranty and then to say something about it to get it removed. That's just scummy. I hate this place. I hate GameStop. Although I think I brought a pretty novelty experience to the employee. It was ridiculous. Corporate tried to push some really shady um, ways to sell warranties. One of the most common sales methods that they pushed was the assumed sale, which is pretty much you're telling them, oh, I'm putting this warranty on for you, and you just do it. But this disproportionately affects people that are not native English speakers, and I've heard a lot of stores um, taking this to their advantage, which is Super shitty. Reason number two, employees are incentivized to lose customers over ruining their numbers. Another thing that happened while I worked there was the PS5's launch. If you weren't there immediately and there was no warning whatsoever, then you weren't going to get one. But what GameStop decided to do after the launch of the PS5 was to tell the customers that if they got a GameStop Pro membership, which cost $15 a year, that they would be first come, first serve whenever we restocked on PS5s. This was total crap. There was no such thing. The second that we restocked on PS5s, whoever walked in that door, it didn't matter if it was just some random hobo off the street, they would be the one to get that PS5. So there's someone I know who worked at GameStop for a stint. It was their first job in a retail environment, and they were in their teens. This person at the time was young and inexperienced, and their whole goal was to be the best cog in the machine that they could possibly be. They were just trying to act exactly as they were taught, and if bagging pre-orders is the most important thing in the world, then so be it. So my friend comes to me, and they say... I remember the first time I lost the store a customer. They were only going to get about four customers on the register that night. And thus, when you're barely working any hours as it is to prove yourself, you need to make those transactions count. If you fail to prove yourself, you're only going to be getting scheduled maybe four to eight hours a week. At least in this instance, I was told about. So back to the story, the manager was in the back and a guy comes up trying to buy a single new video game. 
So my friend decides, you know what? I'm going to do exactly what I was taught and I need to fight for my hours here or else I'm not going to be getting paid anything. So they pressed him just two or three times doing the thing that everybody hates at GameStop. And guess what? This customer wasn't having it. And they decided to inform my friend that they weren't going to be shopping there anymore. And what's really interesting to me is, is that afterward, they were telling me that their initial thought was not, oh my God, I just lost the store customer. Their initial thought, which they told me that they even felt a little guilty for was that, well, at least they weren't getting screwed over with their numbers and maybe they'll be able to actually make some money at this job after all. My friend directly benefited from losing the store a customer because this way their numbers would not get screwed. The point of this story is to act as a demonstration of how the employees are not incentivized to build positive relationships. And that's going to be a theme for the remainder of the video. I was wondering, like, if I brought him, like, a PS5, like, how much would I get, like, for the PS5? Uh, I want a C20 store credit at 176 cash. Man, they've been scamming forever, bro. Reason number three. Even when it's not bad, it still isn't good. Nobody at GameStop is worse than the managers. They will throw it on there absolutely almost every transaction. Uh, me and the other employees at my GameStop, we would constantly be talking about it. I'd be like, dude, did you just did you see what he just did? Again and again and again. He would literally, the printer would have like eight warranties hanging out of it that he purposefully didn't give to the customer because he didn't want them to know that he charged them. All right. Hashtag not all GameStop stores. I get it. I've been to GameStops where I've chatted with the workers. I like them. They like me. We have great talks. We talk about video games. I make my purchase and then I'm on my way. Still, though, every single time they're still running through the script. They're trying to be friendly, but I know they hate it. When there's this desperation in the employees to any degree, and I can sense it, it makes me depressed. For the clerks that I liked, I tried to make pre-orders under their name as if I was giving them a tip because I knew that it could help their metrics, and I thought that I was being nice. But it still sullies my experience because this is now a problem that I'm worrying about. What am I going to do about these people that are obviously not very happy? Even with the people that I'll have a pleasant conversation with, sometimes when it comes time to making the sales, they buck common sense and it drives me nuts. I'm an older male. I am confident in my communication. I am to the point. I'm buying a video game for myself. I say this. Everything I've ever purchased through the store is tracked through the loyalty card. They know who I am both through the card and because they've seen me before. I have never bought the $3 warranty on any games in my life. So why are you pushing these on me? It never ends. I swear, it's at GameStop that my nutty side starts to come out. I promise, I'm normally very quiet in public. So, this dude just starts really pushing the warranty. He's telling me how it's such a great deal, and he knows that it can save me. Which is absolutely ridiculous. So, I tell him back, no thank you. I'm good. I've been buying games for a very long time, and I have never broken a single one of them. Now, rather than doing the reasonable thing, which is understanding, oh, this confident older person is telling me to F off (laughs) politely, maybe I should stop pressing him. But no, he starts just going down the script hard. He's telling me things that don't even make sense. Like, you know, if something happens, I don't want to see you coming back here and telling me how you wish you bought the warranty. I'm just trying to save you, man. (laughs) Really? Really? So I tell him straight out, I could literally buy this game for $70 Snap it in half right in front of you. Buy a second copy 
snap that one in half, then buy a third copy, take it home and enjoy it. And I would still be ahead having never bought one of these $3 warranties from you because I have never broken a game before. Still, this logic did not sink in. And I get it, you know, worker bots got a worker bot. I was there too, but it is maddening still. Reason number four, the pay sucks and these guys aren't real professional salespeople. So when a 10 year old kid comes into GameStop with a wad of cash in his hand and he has, you know, three used games on the counter, you think that kid is going to calculate sales tax? No, he's definitely not. And if employee, if an employee puts a warranty on one, two, or even all three of those games, that kid would have absolutely no clue. He has no clue what the price of those games are, what the sales tax would be, nothing like that. He's just going to hand him the wad of cash. I mean, trust me, I, I've worked in retail for a long time. Kids will give you any amount of money. They, they couldn't care less. So I have been to used car sales lots and seen some real salespeople spit their game. I hate these people, but they can do it rather well and they come off as affable and I'll come close to falling for it. The people at GameStop aren't those people. Your main worker bees at GameStop are squirrely teenagers, which I say with love, as I was once one. They are still in their awkward phase, and you're expecting them to navigate the nuance of sales techniques and not freak someone out? The likelihood of this Tetris block falling into place is extremely low. Also, the place pays you like crap. There is no monetary incentive to get any better either. The managers, which I've ragged on thus far, I understand are in a similar boat. They have district managers breathing down their neck, trashing them for the performances of the guppies at the bottom of the food chain. Even the managers are trash to the district managers. These managers, as they start to find their age above 25, are probably starting to feel the real societal pressure of what the heck are they doing with their own life. Now, I appreciate my retail workers. I think everyone deserves a living wage. And some of these so-called low-skilled jobs are the absolute hardest to perform. I have nothing but respect. However, <laughs> the fact is, is that where society is now, if you're still hanging out in one of these jobs past a certain point, you're going to start wondering where you screwed up. That's where the depression spiral hits. Do you think that these people are going to be great salespeople either? As an aside, if this is you feeling this heat, I want you to know that you aren't screwed for life. Many people have reinvented their lives later down the line. You can do this too. Reason number five, the store itself is lifeless. Even if the situation was fixed, the stores themselves are sad. You would think that a place that has gamers congregating could manage to offer up something a little more. One of the main reasons why anybody ever goes anywhere, especially younger people who are buying video games, is to potentially be in the vicinity of other people that they might want to meet. Otherwise, they would just be ordering online. Even if it's not actually to meet somebody, it could be to be around other people. We humans are social creatures, and that is something that we crave, even if it isn't on the tip of our consciousness. But to get beyond that, the more people in a place, the more likely something memorable might happen. Retail stores, as they become more robotic in trying to separate people from their money, forget about this aspect. You have a place where people want to hang out as they shop for video games. This is literally your only advantage at this point. You should be building up that hangout ability so that when I enter your store, if I'm wanting to, I can engage in random video game conversations with people I otherwise would never meet. This should be a thing that is being fostered to build a sense of community. This would bring higher traffic into the store. And while not everyone would necessarily be a big spender, this is what lures out the rare big spenders that might otherwise be ordering online. 
This is good for everybody. Funko Land, which GameStop bought out in 2000 and took over all of their stores, had something like this. They would have kiosks set up with the latest games for you to try out. They even held contests from time to time. Okay, I know that GameStop still sometimes has demo stations set up, but trust me, it was a little different back then, and you could try out whatever you wanted as long as the store wasn't too busy. Funko Land even held contests from time to time, and I even remember GameStop doing it a long time ago. I won a Funko Land shirt after placing fourth in a Ridge Racer tournament on the PS1, and that was really cool. I know I could have done better, though. I practiced the wrong car. I was too young and stupid. There is so much room to expand upon this idea now today. In a world that is fragmenting so much, there's so much opportunity to bring people together in the real world. Why do you think Pokemon Go was such a big hit? So, GameStop, clear out the Funko Pop clearance shelf that nobody buys from and throw up some TVs and have Smash Brothers going. Uh, how about having some Pokemon trading events? Get people excited to go to your store. Somehow, the company has looked over every single opportunity with the exception of NFTs. <laughs> what the hell, GameStop? I'm not even particularly a hater of NFTs, but that's just stupid. So those are just five reasons, and I could go on so much longer. GameStop, this is your time to shine. There's opportunity here because literally there is nobody else that can do this. You could easily apologize. Just freaking apologize. You have had enough people churn through your system that they know how screwed your store is. You need to own up to your mistakes and promise to turn over a new leaf. Talk about how you used to burn people for the short term, but now you're going to emphasize those long-term relations and stop with the overbearing sales crap. Finally, because it's current year, something something capitalism. I agree. However, just blaming capitalism lets GameStop off the hook too easily. If we wanted to be as effectively evil as possible, we could come up with a system that works even better as a manipulative, soulless husk. How about we come up with some realistic sales expectations based on individual demographics that you collect on your customers through the loyalty card, where you then penalize too good of metrics based on the demographics that you're working with, because obviously they are being manipulated a little too hard if the numbers are too high. This kind of insanity is very possible for them to do if they really wanted to. But what I want to suggest is that the broad brush approach to sleazy sales tactics that they currently have is not good. It is sad. As always, I'd like to know how you feel about all of this. Have you worked at GameStop? Are you one of the good ones? How do you feel about going there these days? I'm not going to lie. I feel a little bad putting out this video because I know there are so many cool workers that I've interacted with at GameStop over the years. Ultimately, even the people that piss me off, I'm not even blaming them, at least not too hard. I know that it's the entire systemic effed up store itself that is making this place what it is. I understand that you're a cog in the system. We're all cogs in the system, but we do need to start calling these things out if we ever want any chance of change. So, thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate your feedback in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more as well.